Hi, this is David with the number 532, 31, here in uh, D-Cube City. You may remember this as the place I think I recorded entry 500. Um, I apologize for the noise, if you can hear any. Um, sitting by this large uh, unit over there, which I am pretty sure is a heater. I don't. Uh, it's a very overcast day. I don't know if the camera can handle that, but uh, it's very gray at the moment. Um, I'm trying to use this thing because I am in a public space, although there is no one here. If uh, anyone does come over, I'm, I'm sure they'll be scared off by, or they'll know what I'm doing because I'm holding this to my mouth. Um, this is a, I don't know if you can remember, but this is a fairly um, businessy residential area. There's a really cool apartment building right there. It's quite large. Um, but uh, this is a really nice mall, and it has all my stores that I like to go to. And uh, it's in a fairly quiet area, which is mainly why I like coming here. What's also really fascinating is um, the amount of women that are here. This is a little after lunchtime at the moment, um, but there's a lot of women, I think, that come out every day who kind of spend um, their lunch and uh, afternoon here, kind of just socializing with their friends. And um, it is a sign of how um, kind of unbalanced the kind of workforce is here, wherein that um, you find a lot of women working, or women staying at home, raising kids, and men working pretty well-paying jobs, well-paid jobs, I should say. So um, I guess that's not too different than uh, the U.S. When you take, when you look at kind of job, men that are working um, really high-paying jobs, you don't usually see their wives working really well-paying jobs or working at all. So I guess that's not too different than the U.S. per se, but um, I guess if I were to call it or relate it to anything back in the States, it would be kind of how women were, uh, were placed into their kind of uh, social class in the 50s and 60s in the U.S. Um, although, you know, with all these East Asian or Asian countries in general, they aren't just being um, brought into the 21st century uh, lightly. They're actually getting um, thrust, thrust here. Um, to where to where we are. So one of the more fascinating things, and I think I've talked about it before, but I'll sing it again, is the amount of young women who are smoking. And it's something that I find it uh, to be a nice thing to see because going beyond their health, which obviously it's not great for that, but um, it is empowering in a way that is um, very passive. And I think any way that can um, bring or begin to equalize the kind of gender inequality that you see in, in East Asia, I think that's something that should be applauded. Now, I know a lot of people might say, of course, that's, you shouldn't applaud that because uh, it's smoking and smoking is terrible. But, you know, my hope is that they smoke when they're young then they learn, uh, you know, by the time they're in their 30s that it's probably not the best thing for them, and they quit. Uh, and, you know, in 30 or 40 years, your body can repair the damage that 10 or 15 years of smoking has done. So hopefully that would be the case for most of these women. But, you know, if it's not, you know, the next generation will learn. And, um, yeah, that's just something that um, I've really noticed here. But uh, going back to the mall, it is very fascinating to see the amount of the amount of uh, women in their 30s that are in there, and you know it's very, you know, nice-looking, youngish women that are just uh, I don't know exactly, you know what what the car or what's this what it is that they're getting out of coming here. You know, of course, it's good for socialization, you know, because you don't want to become some crazy person cooped up in the house all day. But um, it is a fascinating thing to see the, them to do this kind of uh, 
it's almost uh, like a Stepford wife kind of situation. And um, it's not something that I think is negative per se, but it is something that I find curious. And uh, I do think it is um, a little, you know, it's a little funny because, um, you know, they're perfectly capable of working. But um, I guess it's just another thing with status, you know, just showing that you don't have to work, that you don't have to dirty your hands with, with common things. It's just a symbol of your wealth. But it is um, a fascinating thing to see. Because it is. If I, w I was just, you know, straight up ahead as the entry. And uh, I was just in there and it was just probably about 300 women at all the different restaurants. Just maybe 400 just kind of eating with each other. And, you know, very few men at all. So, um, yeah. That's just something that I noticed. Um, I, if I haven't said it before, it's a very overcast day here in Seoul. And... Um, on these kinds of days, it's, um, well, it's a bit, uh, well, I like it, I should say. Um, domestically, things are fine. Um, you know, it's just a matter of getting on with uh, kind of, uh, you know, this visa thing. And once that's, once that's in, you know, game on. Um, you know, I think a lot of people talk talk about living in the moment without ever practicing that. Uh, and one thing that I've learned about not about living in the moment is not trying to live in the moment. Um, it works best when you can just kind of fall into it, and you don't have to concentrate on practicing. Uh, you know, focusing on spending time living in the moment you know um, a lot of a lot of life is learning how to do things without doing them and um, without what I should say learning to do things without knowing or being conscious of doing them and it's uh, something that I really am appreciative of, of as I've learned is that my parents uh, were able to kind of instill in me this kind of I don't know how they did it, but it's kind of passive, um, this passive uh, knowledge that, you know, life is more than just um, work and uh, stress. Although, to be fair, a large part of my childhood, if I can remember my parents and work, it was them uh, stressing over it. But uh, one thing that was really nice is that even though my dad was a fairly hardcore workaholic when I was young, and I mean that in the darkest possible sense, um, that when he was home with, with me and my sister, I felt like he was home. And um, maybe my mom had a different inclination of, of how he was, but to me as a young child, when, when dad was home, dad was home. He was home for us. He was home for himself. You know, he wasn't. He wasn't showing us a lot of work. Like he wasn't. I never saw him. Or maybe a couple times, but I never. It wasn't a common thing to see him strewn. You know, sh uh, papers. On, I mean, sitting at a desk with papers everywhere, or him up to the middle, like at god of the hours of the night, working on the deadline. It was just him being him. And maybe he hid that stuff uh, from me, but I in my memory, you know, they were clear uh, compartments of, of life, work, and home. And for me, um, I just know that when I go to work, it's time for work. And when it's not in work, then don't worry about it. Because, um, especially in the situation that I'm in now, I feel like um, it won't be that hard. And, you know, it's kind of like a a buyer's market, even though in Korea, on the whole, it is a seller's market, but I feel like in my situation, it's sort of a buyer's market. It's like uh, trying to sell, I don't know, like a collector car, you know. Normally, you don't want to buy some Camaro from the 50 or 60s because it's probably not running and rusted out, but if you've kept that Camaro up really well, you know, that's when people really want it. But anyway, I'll end it here. It's been... 10 minutes so uh, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll talk with you in a couple days. Bye.